Shalom, welcome. I'm Pastor Ruth. Welcome back. We're having our session today on the third part of uh, the book of Esther on Purim. Okay. Now, um, I am Pastor Ruth, and this is River of Life Hebrew Studies. If you want to go to our website, riveroflifehebrewstudies.com, we've got lots of good things on there that you'll want to look at. We've got some videos for you to view and some blog for you to read and some interesting things. And there's a place where if you have any uh, thing you want prayer for, you can connect with us. And we also have a donate button on there if you're interested in supporting this ministry of River of Life Hebrew Studies going out to the nations. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about Queen Esther today. We've been, of course, talking about her uh, the whole time, but we've been trying to give you some history and some more of the story. And But today we're going to be talking a little more about Queen Esther. I'm going to give you, in a nutshell, what Purim is. Purim is to celebrate the remarkable deliverance of the Jews from a decree against them. Their enemy in the book of Esther was Haman. God miraculously put his people, Queen Esther and Mordechai, into place. He had his godly ones in place to bring about this miraculous divine reversal of events uh, in that book. They had favor with the Persian king Esther. Queen Esther had favor with the king. She was the queen. And she had favor with the Persian king, king Ahasuerus. Divine favor and a divine reversal by God. God saved the Jews from annihilation. In order to get this full story, go to the book of Esther. So I am going to be talking about Esther today. So let's read a little bit about she was the one being chosen by the king. You know, Vashti was the queen at first, and she refused to come to the word of the king. Uh, so she got removed from being queen, and Esther was chosen as queen. And so let me read a little bit about this. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordechai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king, she required nothing but what Higai, the king's chamberlain and the keeper of the women, had appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked at her. So Esther was taken in to King Ahasuerus and into his house and into his royal house in the 10th month, which is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in the sight of all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So Esther was a chosen one. You know, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. You know, everything that God does is because of his own choosing. He chose to make the heavens and earth. He chose to make man and woman. He chose to create everything on the earth. It was out of his own will and his own choosing. So we were made in the divine image of God. And one of the wonderful things about God is he gave us choice in our life. We get to choose God or we get to choose our own way. We get to choose to be with God or against God. He gave us a free will. So everything about God is about choosing. But he wanted to have, in this story, he wanted to have somebody divinely chosen and placed. So here he took a, a Persian king, Ahasuerus, who really was not friendly with the Jews. And he took this king and he made this queen Esther the Jew to be in favor with him. So it's interesting how when God is in charge of your life, when he's doing things for you, even if things in the natural don't look good, it looks like things aren't going to work out for the best, God can take and he can choose you and put you in 
an honorable position. He can give you the better job. He can give you better people to work for. He can give you your own business or your own ministry. He can give you something that you never thought you could have, but he can put you in that position where you're the chosen one. And so that's the position we find Esther in, but it was at a price for her own life. She had to put herself even in a life death situation in that story in order for God to use her completely. So the book of Esther is located in the Bible, in the writings, the Ketuvim in Hebrew. Remember, we have the law, the prophets, and the writing in the Hebrew Bible. And in the writings, they have a little section called the Megillot. And there are five scrolls in the Megillot. If you take an individual scroll, it's called a Megillah. Okay, but per plural, it would be Megillot. So the book of Esther is located in the Ketuvim, the, the writings in the Hebrew Bible. And um, the scrolls of, of these different uh, books that are in that Megillot are, are read at different times during the Jewish feast days. Am I, are you with me now? I don't want this to be confusing, but I want you to understand and know and a lot of people that are Bible scholars or even pastors may be interested also in this. So during the Purim, uh, the story of the book of Esther is read during that time. Esther, the whole Megillah of Esther is read. And then the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon is read on Pesach or Passover. And Ruth is read on Pentecost or Shavuot. And Lamentations is read on the 9th of Av. And Ecclesiastes is read on the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Sukkot. So just for your own interest, uh, these different books are read during these different feast days. And of course, during the, the uh, Feast of Purim, the book of Esther is, is read, the whole scroll, the whole Megillah of Esther, okay? So um, we are experiencing the victory of Purim all month long. It's just been visiting us. I know this is an area right around where Purim has been. And, but I feel like even before Purim and after Purim, there is a, a victory like that's in the atmosphere. People are feeling it. We're feeling like God is doing something. He is active. H have any of you felt that? that? That God is really just active today. He's doing something. He's doing something is happening in the atmosphere. Something good is coming. And something on our behalf is being worked out in the background and in a way of, of of underneath a hidden way. We talked a little bit about Esther's name. I want to show this to you again for those of you who maybe didn't see the other um, parts. You know, the, the name of Esther is so interesting. Her, her Hebrew name was Hadassah, but she was given the name Esther, and I think that's so interesting because the very first letter in Hebrew being an alphanumeric language, the first letter is Aleph, and it's this one, the first letter of her name. Rabbis refer to that as God because it is the number one. God is one. And, and so when, that, when you look at that, you think of God. And then you look at the rest of her name, Seter, Seter, Esther, Esther, Seter. And that word means hidden. So God was hidden. You know, his name isn't even mentioned in the book of Esther, but he was there. He was working in a hidden way, and Esther even had to hide her identity when she was there at first. And then it got brought out when it was necessary, but there were a lot of things that were hidden. His power was hidden and working, and his divine providence was hidden and working, but it was working in her, her behalf and behalf of God's people. So we're experiencing that, that God is sort of like behind the scenes and he's doing something good. And are you ready for something good? I don't know if you are. I'm ready for something good to take place. I'm ready for some great thing that is, is right around the corner that's getting ready to happen. I just wanted to put that out into the atmosphere and get you to start thinking about that. Hallelujah. So you've got Queen Esther here. You've got a problem that had happened at the beginning of the book of Esther, where Haman had convinced the king that all the Jews needed to be annihilated. And um, then God had to put in place Mordechai, who was the one instructing Esther, and, and, uh, and he said, you know, 
if God will raise up somebody else for the deliverance of the Jews if you don't do this. So she was willing to go before the king even if he hadn't summoned her. So what happened in the book of Esther is there had to be a weapon used against the situation. So if you were in the if you were in this situation with Esther, the weapon was you. If you were Esther, your weapon is you. You're the one. You're the one to step forward and say, it doesn't matter if he does not, if I perish, I perish. She was the one willing to go in behalf of her people before the king. So she was the one standing in place. She was the one that was willing. Remember, I talked at the first, to, at, at the first of this message that I'm giving right now about God gave us free will. So we can choose to be the one to be in place for God to use. And do you think right now with all the events that are going on in the world, I'm going to take it out from just looking at our own families and looking at our own uh, surroundings and our own friends and our own things, our own job. I want to go back out to around the world what all is going on. God has us in place and he has put something in us so that we can make a difference in the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, we're looking at Esther today. And I mentioned, if you were Esther, if you were Queen Esther, your weapon is you. How do we know that? If she was a weapon, what did it look like? Number one, she knew who she was. She knew that she was God's people. She was part of God's people. She knew who she was. She knew she was from the tribe of Benjamin. She knew that she was from the line of King Saul. She had royalty in her blood. She actually knew who she was, and she also knew who God was. She knew who the Almighty was. She wasn't looking to her own resources like Vashti. Looked to her own resources, and Vashti's own resources did not save her. Number two, she knew God's ways. When this thing came up and she had to go before the king, she had to go before the king, and the king had not summoned her for a while. And uh, the rule was she could die if she went before the king without being summoned. So she knew God's ways. You know why we know that? Because when this happened, she said, okay, she told this to Mordechai, gather the Jews, fast and pray for me. She knew that she could not go in her own strength. And if everybody unified and fasted and prayed that something good could come, that God was going to bring strength from heaven. Number three, she knew her en enemy. I want to tell you this. Look at this with me. Each of the Hebrew words has a matching word in Hebrew in the root. And this, this uh, name for Esther shares the root, the same letters. Look at these letters. Look at these letters here. Stay with me now. These are the same letters. The vowels are just different, and it's pronounced different. And instead of seter, it's satar, satar, okay? And that means to refute, to contend, and to destroy. To refute, contend, and destroy. So God put her in place, and she was the one that had the powerful, a, a powerful place. She had a place where she could go before the king. And she could even plan a banquet with the enemy. And she was willing at the banquet with the king and with the queen herself and with this enemy, Haman, she was willing to bring up the story that he, would, he wants to destroy her, that he wants to destroy her people. And so she was willing to refute what Haman, the enemy, had put in place, she was willing to confront it and contend with it, and she was willing to put him in a place of destruction because he wanted to destroy 
all of her people. She was very, very powerful person. God wants us to know who we are. He wants us to know what we have on our side. And he wants us to know that the winner, we're on the winning side. Okay? Hallelujah. So, she also knew. She knew what her weapons in God were. You know, no matter how long the enemy has bound you, no matter how long the enemy has done things to you, God wants to tell you that he can destroy those enemies in your life, the things that have bound you. I know there are some people watching today, I was praying about this earlier, that there are some people watching today that have been in addictions. I don't know if it's alcohol or some pharmaceutical drugs or some kind of addictive, maybe gambling. There are some addictive things that are in your life that are taking over your life. God wants to tell you that he wants to take those enemies out of your life and he wants to make you free and he wants to deliver you. He wants to show you who you are and he wants to tell you he's given you choice and he's going to strengthen your will to be able to lay those things down. If you just go one day at a time, he's going to deliver you from these situations. He has divine reversal for things that have happened, and he gives strength to the weary, and he has refuted and contended and destroyed all of our enemies. Do you hear me? He has done it. Jesus Christ displayed them openly, it says in Colossians, that he destroyed all the enemies when he died on the cross and he displayed them openly. Look and see, I have taken them all away. They will never come back to you. They will never harm you. They will never hurt you. He displayed them openly. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us from all of our enemies. Praise the name of the Lord. So, your weapon against the enemy is you. So if the weapon against your enemy is you, what does it look like? Okay, stay with me now. Number one, you are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. You have access to the throne of God. You know, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the veil that was 40 feet high and 19 inches deep, thick, tore from top to bottom, giving us entrance into the Holy of Holies. We have access as priests before the throne of God. You don't need to go down the street and have somebody pray for you. You can pray to God right now. He, you have access to his throne and he is hearing you, he's listening to you and he is refuting, contending and destroying those enemies that are coming after you. You are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise in Galatians 3.29. If you be in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. You are forgiven, you are set free, you are reigning, you have been given a name of Jesus that's above every other name. The Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, is the name that's above every name. Number two, you know God's ways. You know that if you pray, just a thousand will be chased, of the enemy will be chased away. If you agree together with somebody and come in prayer, do you know how hard that is in our life to find somebody to come in agreement with? But if you do, if you know God's ways and you do that, a 10,000 can be uh, sent away of, of the enemy and the things that are bothering you. God wants to clean up the atmosphere in your home. Do you know how God thinks? That's part of knowing his way. You know that he loves that part of the big nature of God. The big part of his nature is love. In Romans 8, 28, you know how perfectly he loves. Romans 8, 38, so 37 and 38, in all things, in all things. How many things? In all things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So we are perfectly loved. It says in verse 38, I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers or things present or things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You have all of that. That's your weapon. That's what you have, that love. Number three, the weapon is you. 
You know how to refute, contend, and destroy that enemy through faith in the Son of God. Queen Esther was living in a culture where women were placed in low position. Their voice was not heard. Their only value was bearing children. Do you hear me this? When Mordechai told Esther she needed to go before the king, it didn't look good in the natural. She had some, he had some, he had not summoned her in a while so she could lose her life. In the natural, it did not look good. But maybe you're in a situation right now we're in the natural, it doesn't look good. Maybe it's your financial situation. I've been in financial situations in my life and it looked bad and it looked like nothing was going to come of it and yet God, God was faithful to my husband and myself and he always had us in his hand. He was before us and beside us and with us. His spirit never left us when we went through a terrible fi financial reversal. And God was with us. He was for us. And we uh, sought the pathway and, and asked him what to do. And he just was on our side and helped us little by little come out of that so that we could do what God wants us to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just like Queen Esther, your weapon is you. You have the power to destroy that enemy that is trying to take away maybe your children, maybe your grandchildren. I had a grandson one time that, that he went through a terrible rebellious time. And it was, it was so hard on all of us, you know, where is he, where is he? And um, all of a sudden, something happened to him. One night we get a call that he had been stabbed and his life was at risk. The air medevaced him over to a big hospital and they were able to save his life. But you know what? The next time I was with him and praying over him, he said he felt the warmth and the power of God around him. You know, he never changed and went back to his rebellious ways. And now he's married. He has a beautiful child, a beautiful little baby. I'm telling you, God did a divine reversal with his life. God can turn something in your family that looks like it would just be just terrible and, and that person is on the wrong path and you just keep praying for them and God is going to reverse it. You know that um, there was a situation where um, we were uh, having a situation where we were praying. I was praying with another woman of God and there was a situation we were praying for over the phone. And all of a sudden, at the end of our prayer, the other person said, I cut it. And I said, what? And this other person said, she looked up and saw a big sword in her hand. And on the floor, she saw a cord, a thick cord, and she cut it with this sword in the spirit. This was all in the spirit that she saw from the prayers, that strong prayers that we were giving. And later on, she looked at that in the spirit and saw it was flesh and sinew, and it was cutting off a curse that had been over this family where they had lost all of their money. And God had cut that divinely and sovereignly, cut that through prayer. So when you are in a situation, you can be just like Queen Esther and your weapon is you. You can go in prayer. You can go before the throne of God. You can ask the Lord in the name of Jesus to mightily do something for you so that, that the enemy cannot continue to wreak havoc generation after generation. You can pray that there will be goodness coming forward and that there will be peace going forward in your homes. God has goodness for all of you in mind today. I can just see the goodness. Just at the beginning how I saw that there was goodness coming to the nation here and goodness coming that is going to go out. God is going to refute and contend with all enemies that have been stopping and blocking you. I can see that blocking being removed right now in the name of Yeshua our Jewish Messiah. That that thing that has been blocking and stopping you is being removed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And you are seeing strength come to you by the Holy Spirit. 
spirit. Do you know that? You can actually see the strength coming to your body and to your inside that you are going to be able to do what God wants you to do in this hour. You've been divinely appointed for this hour and for this time. I want to bless you right now in the name of Yeshua. I want to bless you right now in the name of, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, his presence, his prosperity, his health and wealth and goodness. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name.